In this video, we're going to look at respiration um, and we're going to discuss the two different types of respiration. So respiration, as you will already know, is the enzyme controlled reaction, which is used to release energy from cells. There are two different types of respiration. There's what we call aerobic respiration and there's what we call fermentation. There's a very simple difference between the two. In aerobic respiration, oxygen is present and available to the cells. This happens in animal, plant and yeast cells. It does not occur in bacteria for reasons that you will discuss if you take biology into fourth or fifth year. So glucose, which is the sugar we eat and we get our energy from, is broken down into the gas carbon dioxide, into water and into quite a lot of energy. Aerobic respiration is the gold standard of respiration. It releases 19 times as much energy as you would get if you didn't do aerobic respiration. This diagram doesn't display the most important point, which is that it's glucose plus oxygen that gives you carbon dioxide, water and energy. So in this one, we've got a better representation. So this circle is glucose. If you have oxygen, you can break it down into carbon dioxide, water and lots of energy. However, the other type of respiration, fermentation, it is an evolutionary time, a much older process. This can occur when there is no oxygen available to the cells. In animal cells, we have a different form of fermentation than in plant and fungal cells. So you remember from aerobic respiration that plant, animal and fungal cells all did the same process. In fermentation, animal cells can turn glucose into lactic acid or lactate, and the yeast and plant cells will turn the glucose into carbon dioxide and ethanol. So this is where it splits. Glucose, you can see there is no oxygen present, will be made into lactic acid and energy. If you go for a run, maybe you've just eaten a lot of food and all of your blood has gone towards your guts to help um, pick up all the nutrients, you might not have a great circulating volume and your uh, body might not really be prioritizing blood going to your leg muscles. So if you decide to then go off on a massive sprint after having a big lasagna for your lunch, you will not be delivering the oxygen and the blood to your leg muscles that they really would like. That means that the um, muscles will run out of aerobic respiration and will have to start doing fermentation. They'll produce a little bit of lactic acid and a lot less energy than they would have in aerobic. You can feel that as part of a stitch. If you stop, give yourself a chance to breathe, then the glucose and oxygen will um, do aerobic respiration and through a process we don't cover until higher, the lactic acid will be turned into the products of aerobic respiration, so CO2, water and energy. In plants and fungi, this is a very important process, um, without oxygen, the glucose is turned into a little bit of energy carbon dioxide and ethanol. This process on the right is how we make all alcoholic beverages. So your beer, your wines, your whiskies, gins and rums, they come from fermentation of plant and fungal cells. You'll look in the next lesson at the factors that affect the rate of respiration. Think about what is required for respiration. Think about glucose, think about oxygen, Think about normal body processes. What would you normally require to do an enzyme controlled reaction? And when you have your lesson next time, we will answer that question. Hopefully that made some sense. If you've got any questions, please do ask and we'll be happy to help.